Over the last couple of months, we've been seeing a bunch of leaks for things like the RTX 3090 and Big Navi and the 3080 Ti and the 42069. And while those are very exciting and I can't wait to see how they're going to perform, the big problem with those is they're going to cost a huge amount of money and that's not where most people buy their graphics cards. So I am the most excited to see what sub $200 graphics card is going to come from the next generation. Because in that price point, for the last four years, there has been an undisputed predator lurking. The RX 480, aka the RX 580, aka the RX 590. Basically, there have been a bunch of them. What we're gonna do in today's video is have a look at the massively overbuilt RX 580 I got my hands on. Basically, it was the only one I could get my hands on on short notice, and it was on sale, so it was the same price as the other versions, and none of that matters. Basically, we're gonna have a look at this quite frankly legendary graphics card and see what kind of 1080p gaming performance we can get from it in 2020. And then after that, we're gonna have a bit of an opinion-based discussion about what we wanna see from a future sub $200 Polaris killing graphics card. Now let's have a look at this behemoth of an RX 580. I really love it when graphics card manufacturers do this, when they essentially strap the Godzilla equivalent of coolers to a more budget-ended graphics card. I think this is gonna have amazing temperatures, but we'll test that a little bit later. I mean, just look at that dense fin array you got there with the three fans that actually, you know, you can see there that they're easily removable. So if you need to replace these fans after some time, that shouldn't be too hard to do. On the back of the graphics card, you'll see here, A, there's a really awesome backplate with some RGB illumination over here and there are only six screws holding the cooler on. You can see there are the two here by the VRM, and then you've got the four around the actual GPU. So this is gonna be a very easy graphics card to maintain, uh, but let's get back to this angle, because you can see here is a metal plate that stretches along the PCB, which will help with GPU sag, and it's actually screwed into the PCI Express bracket. So that's really interesting. It actually wraps all the way around the card. You can see it over here as well. And it actually makes thermal contact with the components. So it does help with cooling as well, which is so amazing. Uh, on the front of the graphics card, you can see here you've got two uh, PWM fan headers. So you can use that if you just wanna completely ruin the cable management in your case. We've got one 8-pin power connector and yeah, just such a sexy cooler. Let's actually end this off by doing a quick peel here. Oh yeah, look at that backplate. So with that, let's have a look at what kind of performance we're getting from this Roid Rage version of the RX 580 at 1080p with a mixture of medium and high settings depending on which game we're running. Now let's have a closer look at the performance of some of these games before we get into the conclusion. Starting off with Escape from Tarkov. Now, I never include it in the normal benchmarks because the performance of that game meanders all over the place like a drunken elephant and then it murders a tourist and just passes out on your camp. You're, you're never gonna get a consistent result from that game. But at 1080p on customs, it runs really well. You're getting above 60 frames per second on average, and it feels great. Now, I think one of the big saving graces of this graphics card is the fact that there's an 8 gig version available, because a game like Escape from Tarkov uses quite a lot of VRAM, and it means that the Polaris GPU is pretty future-proofed here. Even on more demanding maps like Reserve, the frame rate drops a bit, but it still runs perfectly fine. 
Moving over to GTA 5. Now this is a 1080p with high settings, the settings aren't cranked or anything, but you're getting high refresh rate gaming here, which is really cool. And it's one of the few games that actually pulls that off. And it's one of the points that I want to address later on. Now, before we move on to the next game, let's just have a look at this amazing underbridge flight that I pulled off here. Oh yeah, look at that, you're impressed, I can, I can tell. <laughs> now moving over to Fortnite, it doesn't run that well at epic settings, you're struggling to average about 60 frames per second. But if you drop it to high settings, then it runs quite a bit better. You're still not getting like over 100 frames per second average, which is better for competitive games, but it is very playable and you can drop the settings further. Now finally, I just wanna have a quick look at a more demanding modern game, Assassin's Creed. Now Assassin's Creed again runs very well at high settings at 1080p on this graphics card. It only starts really struggling when you throw in like ultra high settings. Then the frame rates do start to chug a bit but it's holding up very well. Oh and quickly before we get into the discussion about what I want from the next generation of sub $200 graphics cards I just want to quickly mention the temperatures on the Strix version of the RX 580. As you could see from all of the gameplay footage it was actually it was running pretty hot. Now bear in mind that the ambient temperature was about 28 degrees Celsius in the room so that's fairly hot and uh, the fan speed was only running at 40% fan speed so it was very quiet. And if you want lower temperatures, you can just crank the fans more. Yeah, there's definitely still headroom in that cooler, but I was kind of expecting lower temperatures. Now, as you can see from these benchmarks, this geriatric graphics card architecture holds up really well in 2020, especially when it comes to 1080p, 60 frame per second gaming, which is the resolution that people use on a budget. So that may have you thinking, Darbit, why do you want a lot more power for this price range then if the RX 580 already does a great job even with more demanding modern titles at 1080p 60 frame per second? Well, that's the thing. I think there's one big difference between the PC hardware landscape today as opposed to four years ago. And that's the fact that 1080p high refresh rate gaming monitors are becoming much more affordable. Even good IPS ones don't cost that much money anymore. So it becomes reasonable to pair a high refresh rate 1080p display with a sub $200 graphics card. And that's why I think we need more power and a 100 plus frame per second gaming beast at $200 is gonna be a pretty big game changer in my opinion for the budget gamer. So to summarize what I'm thinking with all of this, for the last four years, we've been getting roughly the same sub $200 gaming performance. So hopefully with the next generation, we're not gonna get just 20% more for the same cost, but we can jump a whole tier in performance, going from like 60 plus frames per second at 1080p to like 100 plus frames per second at 1080p. I, that's a pretty big ask, but hopefully we can get high refresh rate 1080p gaming performance with not super low settings for sub $200. Let me know in the comment section below if you think that this is a reasonable request. Uh, I have no information pertaining to whether or not this is actually gonna happen. And we're probably gonna have to wait to next year uh, before we get these budget cards of the next generation. But yeah, I think that would be pretty exciting. So with that, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and uh, follow me on whatever social media you like. I'll have it all linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.